Welcome to the channel and today I am super super excited to review our first documentary review on the channel and it is for the Nickelback documentary Hate to Love. One of my favorite bands in the world. So I'm going to try not to be too biased but you clicked on this video so you know what you're getting into. This documentary was super, super fun, informational filled, and it talks about the band's rise and their hate and their struggles in their careers to overall just taking a look behind the scenes of one of the most controversial bands in the world, Nickelback. It's taken way too long for this band to get their own documentary, so I'm happy they're getting one. So basically, this documentary starts off with their childhood and how they were born in Canada and how Chad, Ryan, and Mike's livelihood grew up and stuff like that and how they were starting their band as like a very very indie type of band there's a lot of interesting facts in this documentary guess what they were not a mega corporate sellout like people assumed they were they had to get a lot of money loaned to them to make this band work and throughout the band's earlier years they had a lot of problems they had a lot of people leaving the band, mostly like their drummers and stuff. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I didn't know about that. And then you just see a whole different side of Chad that you didn't know about. Like this dude is still a human being at the end of the day. Like when the band started getting all of their hate after like... What was the album that they started getting on their hate on? It wasn't All the Right Reasons. I think it was like The Long Road, I think. Or one of their albums that took really, really off is when they started getting all of their like hate and stuff. And you could tell that it started to really bother Chad because he's he's a human. At the end of the day, whether you like the dude or not, it doesn't matter how much you get hated on, you cannot take the criticisms that much. Because, let's be honest, the criticism wasn't really needed. It was really, really silly. Because in the early 2000s, when they were taken off, and they were getting their stride, everybody loved them. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was cool to hate them. And another interesting fact about this documentary that I didn't know about was their first record company, Road Runner label. It was a metal. It was a metal company. It was a metal band produced label record. <laughs> and this is going to rub people the wrong way. But I found it interesting that metal music was eventually going to shut down the lights to that record label. Without Nickelback, those lights were going to get turned off. I hate to say it, I didn't know about that, but metal fans, you kind of should be happy Nickelback was signed on to that record deal. Otherwise... The lights were going to get turned off. And then we get into the personal lives of like the other band members. Like Ryan Peak, for example. I didn't know this, but Ryan Peak has social anxiety. He struggled in the earlier days with the fact of wanting to be in front of people. Dude doesn't show it very well, but that was really interesting, honestly. I didn't know about that. And he also had really, when he moved to Alberta, he really wasn't a part 
of the group, he didn't fit in really. He didn't know how this was going to work. So that was also a pretty interesting um, fact as well. And then it dives into Mike's like personal struggles with having having a head issue and not knowing all that stuff. And it leads into their dark stuff as well and all the other stuff. But this documentary is great. I thoroughly loved it. And I resonate with this band because I was that fan. I'm still that fan. I started listening to Nickelback when I was like in middle school. And I was that fan who would get mocked, who would get ridiculed, who would say, oh, you have no good taste in music. Oh, your music is trash. You're a fan of Nickelback? Ugh. Like... I resonated with Chad in that aspect because, yeah, I like them. They make great music. And I struggled throughout the years of being okay with that. Like, I went through a dark, I went through a dark period of where I stopped listening to their music. The album was like Dark Horse is when I stopped listening to their music because I had so many people in my ear Telling me that I needed to stop. And I will admit, I caved in. But it didn't last long. Because I came right back and I woke up and I said, Why am I listening to you people? I love this group. This group is awesome. It gives us great songs. I don't need to listen to you. And then I came back. I liked the band's dynamic as well in this documentary. Chad's a funny dude, okay? He jokes around. He showed his funnier and goofy side in this documentary that we already knew, that we knew, but not a lot of people, I think, know about. The thing I'm going to say is this. I will end it off with this. If for some weird reason you still despise this band, I encourage you. This is what? March 30th of 2024, I encourage you to go watch the documentary, whether if you can stream it or own it physically, I hope it'll be out physical. Go watch the documentary, come back to this video, and then sit here and try to tell me that they still suck. Because after watching this documentary, I have a lot more respect for this band. I respected this band regardless. But I have a ton more respect for this band. I have a negative, but it's not really like your typical normal negative. It's more of a... This documentary was more for the fans. It was super fan servicey. It had only a two-day showing in select theaters. I feel like it should have went nationwide. Unless it's going to hit streaming... Or it's going to come out physically. I feel like more people need needed to view this. Because it really is an interesting documentary at the end of the day. So I'm going to wrap up this documentary, documentary review with this. If you somehow are able to stream this or own it. I recommend you giving it a watch. If you're an elapsed Nickelback fan. I suggest... You give this a watch because it's a decent documentary. Heck, if you're a music fan, I encourage you to still watch this documentary. The other cool thing that I loved about this documentary is after the credits rolled, you got three live performances of some of their awesome songs like How You Remind Me, Those Days, and it was just... It was just a fun time. It was worth the money I spent. But if you enjoyed this first time documentary, documentary review, smack this video with a like. And if you're a Nickelback fan, subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to link some other Nickelback videos right over here. And I will end it with this. Nickelback still rocks. They're always going to rock. And if you cannot get with the program with them... Just don't. 
because Chad says this, he makes Nickelback music for Nickelback fans. He no longer needs to feel the pressure to make people like him who don't like his band. Rock out, guys. Peace.